Good morning, folks. We've got a number of key stories to hit today, including a look at where we are in the ramping up of Solar Cycle 25. Let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com and find that the last day was an exercise in patience. We've waited years for sunspots to return and to see their arching umbral magnetic fields above. The coronal holes are becoming more prominent at lower latitudes as well. The incoming active region on the north has crested onto the Earth-facing disk now, but a lead umbra with trailing magnetic surface areas is all we've got there. We'll take a closer look momentarily, but first the solar wind. Despite the slight dropout in plasma speed, the density rose slightly, and we saw a twist to the phi angle up in blue as well. Those are driving a touch more geomagnetic activity, again despite the stream being slightly slower. Now let's come back to where we are in the solar cycle. We were in sunspot minimum, polar confined coronal holes, no active regions for a few years. Then in December of 2019, the bright umbral magnetic fields returned at small scale, but were generally not accompanied by significant umbra beneath them. Even when one appeared, it wasn't mature, it didn't develop the penumbra, but today, here, eight months later, we are seeing sunspots accompanying those active regions, and some of them even have penumbra, like this one on the south. FYI, the dark central core is the umbra, and the peripheral circle, like the colored iris of your eye that surrounds it, is the penumbra. Now, these will develop much more over about the next six months, as even the incoming active region on the north only has the one small lead umbra, and again, no penumbra with it. But towards the end of this year, or the first half of 2021, we should start to see much more complex active regions being developed. Their multi-umbra setup and high morphing dynamics create super collisions among those arching fields, and then we'll have the solar flares again. Top weather story on Earth is in Bangladesh today. One third of the country is underwater, almost five million people affected, and hitting at times when they've got other concerns for their livestock and preparation for the seasonal transition. Death toll currently stands at 41, and rising. A complex study that took nearly three years to complete has taken a close look at the microwave emission during the great 2017 solar flare. The collision between the fields that sparked the flare created a giant electric current sheet flowing from the flare genesis zone outward and helping to drive the plasmoid ejection outward. The core of the CME spins as the magnetic field supplied by the electric field began imparting spiral dynamics on the plasma. Up next, we're going to weather balloons, and they plan to launch one of the highest flying ever to reach the 26 miles altitude mark, where the short wavelengths and submillimeter returns are not well filtered out by the atmosphere. Compared to satellites, these missions can provide tremendous benefit at minimum cost, and astronomy really needs it, because a new way to look at the Hubble constant in the background temperature of the universe once again makes us remember Dr. Robitaille's work revealing how this really is not science. Bolstering this point is the primary conclusion of the paper, that either fixing tremendous mistakes or discovering new physics must be on deck before they can hope to understand the cosmos. Up next, a super cool idea here and one you're going to have to take more seriously in just a moment. Life on Mars may indeed be possible just below the surface. The conditions there are in many ways less harsh than we find tardigrades in here on Earth. Don't forget, we've been looking at all the changes ongoing on the red planet right now, and when you remember that the water they hope is there is almost certainly indeed there in layer after layer of dust and nighttime condensation. But you might be thinking to yourself, uh, wouldn't it be dead by now? Well, indeed, the point is that the current conditions exist to entertain the argument to this day, long after its oceans have disappeared. But even still, it could have been lying dormant, like the bacteria they dug out of an ocean floor core from a hundred million years ago. The bacteria activated almost immediately and began reproducing. Folks, this should not only tell us what life can survive in this universe, what time can be survived, but it brings up the question of what happens during great upheavals of Earth, what new life is made available from its imprisonment below when the seas are sent from their beds. Is it possible that during the cyclical Earth disaster, there is an explosion of change in the biosphere from something other than the disaster. Now, while we're on that topic, just not to be obtuse, we believe the sun has a cyclical, long period recurrent micronova that triggers these disasters on Earth. And in addition to last week's more than doubling the known recurrent nova in the galaxy, today we'll go ahead and confirm that stars can even have two different types of recurrent nova. 
This one here is both a long period recurring classical nova in all likelihood and a much shorter repeating dwarf nova star. The latest event was seen spatially coincident. And folks, what stars can do with the slightest turn of the wheel is incredible. And with dust, galactic magnetic fields, and more grabbing for control, the plasma monsters in space have a way of ending the discussion immediately. We greatly appreciate your support. The Cosmic Disaster Playlist is how you learn more about all of this. Look below this video on YouTube, click our name here on YouTube to find the Cosmic Disaster on our channel page, and it is also at suspiciousobservers.org along with the rest of our top videos. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close, and of course we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now it's 5.15 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear, be safe everyone.